Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter. And what we're going to be working on this time is the start of a kill streak reward system. So you can call these perks, kill streaks, whatever you want to call it. But the basic idea is giving the player some type of extra perk or boost whenever they rack up a kill streak. So for now, I have it set at 3, 5, and 7. And whenever you reach that particular level, it's going to light up the corresponding perk. So let me go ahead and start by getting three kills. Headshot. Okay, and you can see when I get three kills, that perk one turns into the green color. And then if I press the letter Z, it turns back to the red color like I used the perk. I don't have these perks set up yet, but what we're going to do is start with this GUI system. And then you guys can let me know what type of perks or boosts that you want to see for these different levels. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so to create this GUI, we're going to go under Starter GUI. And then we're going to go inside of our Screen GUI. And the first thing we're going to do is add another frame. So go ahead and drag this frame near the bottom or wherever else you want to put it. Go ahead and resize it. For this example, I'm going to put three different perks in there. But if you want to include more perks, that's completely fine. So once you have it at the size that you want, you can go ahead and customize this frame to look however you want to. All I'm going to do for this frame is go down to the Style section, and then change it from Custom to Drop Shadow. After that, I'm going to be adding three different text buttons. I'm going to be using text buttons, but if you want to use image buttons instead, that's completely fine. So for now, I'm just going to insert one text button. I'm going to rename it. For the name, I'm just going to say P1 for perk 1. After that, I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to leave a little space at the bottom to put a label. So let's go ahead and press the plus sign, and we'll insert a text label. And then for this text label, I'm going to rename it. So for this one, I'm going to use the letter Z to activate it. So I'm just going to put the letter Z for the name of it. And then at this point, we're just going to customize it to look however we want. So I'm just going to make a few changes, such as what the text says, and also the color. So for the button itself, I'm going to go down to the text section and change it from button to perk1. I'm going to use this option right here, which says text scaled. I'm going to change the font to this one right here. For the color, we're going to go up a little bit. For background color three, I'm going to choose red. And then for the transparency, I'm going to change it to 0 0.75. OK, for the label, what I'm going to do is go down to the text section and just put the letter Z. I'm going to do text scaled, and then change the font. And then for transparency, I'm going to change this one to 1. All right, so once you have it set up for one button, what you can do is just select both of these items. So you can click on the first one, hold the Control key, and then click on the second one. And then what you want to do is hold the Control key and press the letter D to duplicate. You can just move it over a little bit, and then press it one more time. And then all you have to do at this point is just make a few changes. So it says perk 2 and perk 3. And then for the letters at the bottom, it'll say X and C. OK, and once you finish customizing, it should look something like this. So under the frame here, we're going to have P1, P2, and P3, and then the different letters. And then for each one, I just change the text to correspond with the particular button or label. One additional thing that you probably want to do with this GUI is scale it so that it looks good on all screen sizes. To do that, you can download a plugin. The plugin that I'm using is Auto Scale Lite. And to use this plugin, all you have to do is click on the GUI item and then click on Unit Conversion. And then under the size section, you just want to press Scale. 
And then for each item inside the frame, you want to do the same thing. So for all the text buttons and all the text labels, you just want to press scale for the size option. Okay, and the final thing we're going to do for this GUI is just rename our frame to Killstreaks. Okay, so next we're going to start working on the scripting for this. The first thing we're going to do is go under the server script service and click on our leaderboard script. We're going to be adding another int value that will keep track of the player's current kill streak. So right below kills here, what we're going to do is we're going to say local streak is going to be equal to instance dot new. And here we're going to be creating an int value. We'll say streak dot value is going to be equal to zero. We'll say streak dot name is going to be equal to streak. And then finally, we'll say streak dot parent is going to be equal to player. If you want to, you can also store this value in the leader stats by changing it from player to leader stats. Just keep in mind that if you do that, there's going to be a few spots in the code that we're about to write that you're going to have to update as well. Okay, so once you add that section, what we're going to do is we're going to head back to our killstreaks frame and add a local script. Okay, so in the script, we're going to start with a reference for the frame. So we'll say local frame. It's going to be equal to script.parent. After that, we're going to create variables for our three different buttons. So we'll say local perk1. This is going to be equal to frame colon wait for child. And then here we're going to say P1. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this two more times. This is going to be perk 2 and perk 3. And then here we're going to say P2 and P3. Next, we're going to create a variable for the player. So we'll say local player is going to be equal to game dot players dot local player. Then we're going to make a variable for our streaks value. So we'll say local streak is going to be equal to player colon wait for child. And what we're looking for is the streak value. So the streak value right here is the one that we just created on our leaderboard script. All right, so what we want to do next is every time the streak value changes, we want to check to see what it is and see if the player has earned a kill streak. So to do that, we're going to say streak dot changed colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put function. And the first kill streak that we want to check for is when the player gets three kills. So we'll say if streak dot value is equal to three. Then what we want to do is take perk one and change the background color from red to green. So to do that, we're going to say perk one dot background color. And we're going to set this equal to color three dot new. And to make this green, we're going to put zero for the red value, 255 for the green, and then zero for the blue. After that, we're going to say else if streak dot value is equal to five. So this will be the next level. In that case, we want to change the color of perk two. So we'll say perk two. And rather than retype this, I'm just going to copy and paste. And we'll just change this to perk two. And then finally, we'll do one more check. We'll say else if. This time, streak.value, if that's equal to 7, then we'll change perk 3 to green. All right, so that's good for now. So the next thing we're going to do is head back to the leaderboard script. And on this script, what we're going to do is whenever a player gets a kill, in addition to giving them one for the kills value, we're also going to give them one for the streaks value. So we'll say killer tag dot streak dot value 
and this is going to be equal to the original value. And then we're going to say plus 1. So while we're here, whenever a player dies, we also want to reset the streaks value back to 0. So we can do that right here. And we can do that by saying player dot streak dot value is equal to 0. So in this section right here, player is referring to the player that died. And then killer tag is the player that kills the other player. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and see if it's working. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get some kills, and we'll see if our different perks light up. Okay, so it looks like perk 1 is good. So let's go ahead and get two more kills and see if perk 2 lights up. Headshot. Headshot. Okay, so perk 2 is working, so two more kills, and then we'll know that all of them are working. All right, so everything looks good. So the last thing we're going to do for this video is whenever I press either the X, the Z, or the C key, it's going to change them from green back to red, just like they were being used. Okay, so to do the scripting so that when I press the three different keys on the keyboard, it affects the perk buttons, what we're going to do is go back under the local script that should be inside of your killstreaks frame. And since we're going to be doing stuff with input, we're going to have to get user input. So to do that, we're going to start by making a variable for the user input service. So right over here, we're going to say local user input. And we're going to set this equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. After that, we're going to be making our function like we did for some of the other scripts. And just to save us a little bit of time, you can go ahead and go to one of the other scripts where we use this and just copy it. And then we'll paste it in this script and just make some changes. So for this one, for the function name, you can change it to something like perk. And then change it down here as well. Okay, so now for this part, we're going to say for the letter Z. And what we want to do is change the perk's background color back to red. So we're going to change this part back to 0, and then for this it's going to be 255. And then what we can do is we can copy this section twice. So we'll do copy, and then paste, and then paste. Here we're going to change it from key code Z to X, and then C. Here we're going to change it to perk 2, and perk 3. All right, and then the next thing we want to do is just convert these from if statements to else ifs. So we'll do that one and also this one. All right, and there we go. So let's go ahead and try it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a few kills to rack up a kill streak, and then we'll make sure these buttons change it back from the green color to the red color. All right, so we earned our first kill streak. So what I'm going to do now is press the letter Z like we were going to use it, and we'll see if it changes back to the red color. All right, so that looks good. All right, and finally, we'll just test out the last two. So I earned the last two kill streaks. So if I press the letter X, it goes back to red. And also the same for perk three.
Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. If you have any ideas of what we should do for our different killstreaks, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.